last class we were discussing about what's the need of water treatment and we have also seen that how to select the water treatment processes uh, we discussed how it is the treatment unit or your treatment operations vary depending upon the source of water actually we have to improve the quality of water so if the source or whatever water coming to the treatment plant or whatever raw water available to us is not of good quality then naturally the extent of treatment required is very high and moreover if you take the water from the ground or underground then the treatment we have to give some extra treatment and if you take the water water source or surface water then the treatment required is different at least the initial treatments so we have seen that how to go for the treatment especially we have discussed about the aeration which is essential for ground water because in the ground the oxygen availability is limited so there are chances of having odorous gases and elements which is in the reduced form so to remove these things we have we have to go for aeration and we have discussed what are the different types of aeration units available and how to design and what are the design parameters then we were discussing about solid separation in water treatment itself we come across different types of solids suspended solids colloidal solids dissolved solids which we have discussed earlier and when these solids are in liquid or in solution the suspension can be of various types sometimes the suspension is stable and other times it is unstable this sta stability or unstability is dis discussed or expressed in terms of the colloidal or the solid stability for example if you take a colloidal solution the colloids are so stable because of the brownian motion and their surface characteristics so it is very difficult to remove the colloidal particle from the suspension by only physical force but if you take a so solution or a suspension which is having suspended particle or particle with high density and large size then it is very easy to remove them by physical force i mean by gravity so today we will be concentrating on the removal of partic particles which is of higher size which can be removed easily by sedimentation or by settling and this sedimentation is a unit operation because we are making use of the gravity force and gravity is the driving force here so this is a physical process and we can call it as unit operations and another treatment commonly used for solid separation is flotation flotation means the separation of solids which is lighter than water but in water treatment most of the solids whatever we deal with it is always denser than water so most of the time we won't go for this flotation we always go for sedimentation and as i have already discussed the suspended solution can be unstable with respect to the suspension and can be stable with respect to the suspension so if it is a suspended solution then it is unstable because the size of the particles are high and the density is relatively high so it will be easily settling but if, when you come to the colloidal and dissolved solution they are stable and if you want to treat this stable suspensions or if you want to remove the solids from the stable suspensions first, first what we have to do we have to make the solids unstable or make the suspension unstable with respect to the solids then we have to remove the suspension or we have to remove the solids by settling and coming to the sedimentation first we will discuss what are the different types of particles because it is very very important when we go for the design of sedimentation systems the particles can be classified basically into two categories one is discrete particle and another one is flocculent particle discrete particle is the one whose size shape and specific gravity do not change with respect to time for example if you have a suspension of sand or silt and if you allow it to settle in, in a cushion condition what happens each individual particles will be settling down and the, if you analyze the size or shape or specific gravity of that particles it will not be changing with respect to time or all throughout the size shape and density will be remaining as a constant but coming to the flocculent particle 
those are the particles whose surface properties are such that they aggregate or collide with other particles upon contact. Because of this one, they change their shape, size and specific gravity. This often occur in water treatment, especially in coagulation flocculation system. So, we have already discussed that if the suspension is stable with respect to the solids, we have to make them unstable, then remove the solids by settling. So, in coagulation flocculation or if you are interested in removing the colloidal particle, how can we make them unstable? So, we have to add some chemical agents which can change their surface properties and make them agglomerate. So, in the process what happens? The particles will be agglomerating. So, this agglomeration is a time dependent process. So, as more and more particles come in contact, the agglomeration will be more. So, with respect to time what will happen? Initially, a single particle will be there and when it passes, okay, it will come in contact with other particles. So, the size will be gradually increasing and with respect to time, the size will be increasing and towards the end, the size will be maximum. So, what is happening here? Their shape, size and the specific gravity of the entire agglomerate will be changing with respect to time. And now, coming back to the suspension, we can classify the suspension into two different categories. One is dilute suspension and another one is concentrated suspension. What is this dilute suspension? Dilute suspension is the one where the concentration of suspension is not sufficient to cause significant displacement of water as they settle or particle will not be close enough for velocity field interference to occur. That means, the suspension is so dilute or the particle density or particle concentration is so low. So, each particle will be settling as independent of particle or the velocity field of one particle is not being affected by the other particle or the concentration of the suspension is so low that it will not cause any significant displacement of water. Just like the soil mechanics, we talk about the consolidation test and all. So, what is happening? Because of the weight, what is happening? Whatever the water entrapped in between the particles will be getting displaced. So, that type of a thing will not be happening in dilute suspension. So, what is the concentrated suspension? The suspension which does not have these properties. That means, the concentration is so high that each particle cannot act as independent particles or the velocity field of one particle is being affected by the other particle and there will be the displacement of water because of the weight of the particles because it is so dense the one particle will be sitting over the other particle and it will be compressing the entire system. So, water will be getting displaced. So, based upon the size of type of the particles and type of the suspension, we can classify the settling into different categories. This figure shows it clearly. So, the y axis gives the percentage solid starting from 0 to 100 percentage and this side represent discrete particles and this is flocculent particles. So, if the concentration of particle is low and the nature of particle is discrete, then we call the settling as class 1 or type 1. And whereas, if the concentration of the suspension is low and the particles are of flocculent nature, then we call it as type 2 or class 2 settling. When we talk about water treatment, mainly we come across these two types of settling. Class 1 or type 1 settling is very common in primary sedimentation tank, where we usually remove the sand, silt and clay particles. And type 2 settling is common in coagulation flocculation or clarifloculator, where we add alum and coagulate and flocculate the particles and this flocks we remove. So, that is an example of class 2 or type 2 settling. And sawn settling, the concentration of the solids are relatively high. So, the particles will in be interfering the velocity field of other particle. So, the particle cannot settle as independent particle. So, they will be settling as a group. So, we, if you keep this suspension in a cushion condition in a cylinder, then we can see that a clear zone is developing and that clear zone will be coming down slowly, slowly. So, that is why it is known as zone settling. In environmental engineering point of view, this zone settling is very common in wastewater treatment systems. 
for example in activated sludge process after the aeration tank we have to go for sludge removal so that is taking place in this sound settling mode and coming to compression settling either it is discrete particle or flocculent particle the concentration is very high then we will be having compression settling because the weight of the particle will be displacing the water and because of the compression the settling is taking place. So, this type of settling is very common where we go for sludge thickening and all. So, these two settling we will be discussing in wastewater treatment portion and we will go in detail about class 1 and class 2 or type 1 and type 2 settling today. So, first we will discuss about type 1 settling. The significance or the property of this settling is this is discrete particles and they are in dilute suspension. So, imagine if one particle is put it into the liquid. So, what are the forces will be acting on the particle immediately? Definitely the gravity force will be acting on the particle okay, because of the weight and the gravity that force will be acting on that one and another another force is the buoyant force. Okay. According to the Archimedes principle, it is equal to the volume of water displaced by this particle. Okay. So, we can find out what is the total force or the net force acting on the particle. But once the particle start moving, there is yet another force coming into picture that is the track force because of the viscous friction experienced by the particle. So, based upon that one, we can find out what is the actual settling velocity of the particle if it is in a suspension. So, the force of gravity we can easily find out using this equation. This is rho g into g, g is the acceleration due to gravity and v of particle. That means, volume into rho will be giving the mass, mass into acceleration will be giving you the force of gravity and buoyant force is nothing but rho w which is the density of water and g acceleration due to gravity and volume of particle because it is equivalent to the weight the weight of water displaced because the volume of water displaced will be equal to the volume of the particle that is why we are taking vp here. So, if that particle is in suspension as such if it is not moving the net force acting on that one is the difference between this force of gravity and buoyant force because we have seen that both of them are acting in opposite direction one is in the downward direction and another one is in the upward direction. So, the net force is rho p minus rho w into g into v p. If the particle density is equal to the water density or rho p is equal to rho w this term will be equal to 0. So, net force acting on the particle will be 0. So, there will not be any motion the particle will be staying the exact location where it was. But most of the time what is happening the particle density will be much higher than the density of water. So, this will be acting as the driving force and the particle will start moving downwards. Okay. Once the motion starts, so what will happen the particle is moving through the liquid. So, a third force is created due to the viscous friction, the viscosity will be viscosity of the water will be acting on the particle. So, that will be opposing the motion, the particle is moving in the downward direction and the frictional force will be acting on the upward direction. So, this is the third force getting introduced into the system. This force is known as track force. So, track force we can this is wrong this is track force we can find out using this formula C d A p rho w into v squared by 2. This A p is the exposed surface area of the particle and v is the velocity with which it is moving. So, at steady state what will happen? So, initially it was having a net force because of the difference between the gravity force and the buoyant force. So, it will be moving at a particular velocity, but the track force is acting upon that one. So, the acceleration will be decreasing with respect to time and after a certain stage what will happen? the system will be becoming steady state that means both the force will be equal that means the net force as well as the track force. So, this is the steady state condition that means gravity force minus 
buoyant force will be equal to the trike force. So, we can write like this rho p minus rho w into g into v p is equal to c d a rho v squared by 2. So, from that one how can we find out the settling velocity? We are interested in this v square v, this is the settling velocity. So, initially we will talk about spheres, we assume that the suspended so the solution or the solution which is having solids, all the solids are of spheres. So, we can find out what is the ratio between this V p, because V p is coming here and A p is coming here, what is the ratio of this V p and A p. So, volume of sphere is nothing but 4 by 3 pi r, pi r cube and volume of and area of sphere is nothing but the cross sectional area that is what we, we are considering because that is the one which is coming into picture when we consider the track force. So, this is pi, d, pi r squared. So, this is d by 2 and this is d by 2. So, we will be getting the ratio as 2 by 3 d. So, we can find out what is this v squared by 2. It is nothing but 4 by 3 g rho p minus rho w into d by c d by rho, rho w. So, we are finding out what is this v squared by 2 and then now if you see in this equation we know rho p, we know rho w and we will be knowing what is the diameter of the particle and g we know and only unknown is c d that means coefficient of track. So, how can we find out the coefficient of track? Okay, it, it depends upon the nature of flow. Okay. The coefficient of track will be varying in laminar condition, turbulent condition and transition so on. So, it has seen that C d is equal to 24 by R e if it is a laminar flow and it is 3 by R e raised to half plus 0 0.34 in transitional and 0.4 in turbulent. So, first we have to see what is the type of flow we have. Be depending upon that one we have to find out what is the exact value of value of C d and if we can substitute that value in C d we will be getting what is the settling velocity or terminal settling velocity. And now we will see what is this Reynolds number. I know all of you know what is Reynolds number. It is nothing but rho v d by mu and we have to include a factor phi it is nothing but the shape factor. So, what is this laminar region? If Reynolds number is less than 1 we consider it as laminar. If Reynolds number is greater than 10 raise to 4 it is turbulent flow. So, if you consider laminar flow and substitute C d is equal to 24 by R e and R e substituted by phi into V t rho w d by mu and we assume that the shape factor for spheres is 1, then we will be getting V t equal to g rho p minus rho w d square by 18 mu where V t is the terminal settling velocity. So, we can calculate what is the settling velocity of particles in discrete suspension or this law is known as Stokes law. So, by using we can, Stokes law we can find out what is the settling velocity of the particle in a discrete in a dilute suspension of discrete particle or in type 1 settling. So, if you know the settling velocity and we can find out what is the time required for the particle to travel in a given distance. So, we can design our settling time in such a way that the particle will get enough time to settle. But coming to reality what is happening is the particles whatever is present in the water it will not be having uniform size, uniform density and uniform shape. So, how can you go for the theoretical measurement of settling velocity? It is impossible or if you calculate the settling velocity theoretically and we use it for the design you will not be getting the required efficiency. So, what we usually do is we conduct settling column analysis in the laboratory and use that data for the design of sedimentation tanks for type 1 settling. So, how can we do the or how can we conduct the settling column analysis? So, this is a sim very simple test what we have to do is we have to take a settling column of around 2 to 3 meter depth and a diameter of 10 centimeter or more because 
if you go for very small diameter the wall effect will be there because the particle diameter will be there and if the particle diameter and column diameter will not meet a specific ratio the settling will be affected by the wall so that is known as wall effect so we have to take the settling column in such a way that there is no wall effect and it will depict the sedimentation tank in the field so what we have to do here okay this is your suspension which we have to clarify and we assume that the liquid level in the column is is it not that means the height of the liquid column in the settling column is is it not so we are assuming that a particle is here in the top where is it not equal to zero okay and it has to come up to this region then the particle is removed from the system so what is the if we are giving a time of t not then we can find out what is the velocity velocity is nothing but the distance traveled by time of travel so we can find out that one this is the is not because is not is the distance it has to travel to get removed because this, this is the zone we assume that once it reaches in this zone the particle is not going to come back to the solution again or the particle is literally removed from the system so the velocity is nothing but is it not by tu where tu is the time taken to travel that is it not distance so this v not is nothing but the average settling velocity now again we will consider another particle the particle is somewhere here and we are giving the same time as t not to this particle also is it p so what will be the settling velocity of that particle whether it will be higher than the particle whatever we are considered here or the settling velocity of this particle is less than that because the first particle whatever was here at the top of the settling column it took t not time to travel is it not distance but the second particle is taking the same time t not to travel a distance of is it p so naturally the settling velocity of this particle is that which is at a height of elevation of is it p will be lower than the settling velocity of the particle which is in the top so vp we can find out the distance traveled by time of travel that is is it p by t not and we know that both the times are equal so we can equate the two terms is it not by v not because t t not is same is it not by v not is equal to is it p by vp or if you want to find out the ratio of velocities of those two particles which took the same time to get removed from the system or took same time to reach the bottom of the settling column we can find out the ratio of their velocity vp by v not is equal to is it p by is it not okay so ratio of velocity is proportional to the height at, at which the particles were so from this on we can make some conclusions if we are giving t not time for the sedimentation tank for the removal of the particles all the particles with a velocity settling velocity v not or higher than v not will be getting removed from the system and the particles which is having a settling velocity vp less than v not will be getting removed if it is at a height is it p or lower than that because if the settling velocity is vp that means the velocity is lower than v not and the particle at is it not with a velocity of v not and a particle at is it p with a velocity of vp take the same time to reach this region where we assume that the particles are removed so if the particles are having only a velocity of vp and if you want to want them to get removed from the system at a time t not then the particle should be either at is it p or at an elevation lower than is it p because if it is somewhere here it will be getting removed before t not and if it is somewhere here it will not be getting removed before or within t not so those are the things concluded here all the particles with diameter greater than or equal to d not and settling velocity greater than or equal to v not will be removed from the system because the time 
required for the settling will be lower than T naught and if the DP is less than D naught or VP is less than V naught will be removed provided its original position is below point DZP because point DZP it was taking the same time as T naught to get removed. So, if the velocity is less than V naught then it should be below the point ZP and removal efficiency is a ratio of velocity of that particle to the settling velocity V not defined by Z not by T not. T not is the detection time provided in the sedimentation time. So, this is the pictorial representation of that one. So, when a particle is there in a sedimentation tank and the water will be flowing continuously to the tank. So, what will happen? It will be having a horizontal component of the velocity that is the same as the horizontal velocity of the tank and it will be having a vertical velocity that is the settling velocity. So, the particle will be taking a part like this, this is the resultant of the V h which is the horizontal velocity and V naught which is the vertical velocity. So, if the particle is here and it is having a vertical velocity of V naught and the horizontal velocity that is the same throughout the time. So, that particle will be getting removed at this point. So, we are assuming that any particle comes up to this point is getting removed and we are considering and the particle here see it has to travel only this much distance vertically. So, the same time what is happening the V h is the same and it is having the settling velocity V p. So, the resultant velocity is like this. So, within that same time since the elevation it requires to travel is less, so it will also be getting removed. So, by using this concept we can find out what is the efficiency of a sedimentation tank because the sedimentation tank will be having different sizes and different shapes of particles mix homogeneously mixed from the top to bottom. So, what is happening? The particles which is of we will be designing for a particular diameter particle to be removed from the system. So, all the particles with that diameter will be getting removed from the system whatever be the position of the particle. But if the particle diameter is lower than that or the settling velocity, settling velocity is lower than the design settling velocity, it does not mean that all the particle will be remaining in the tank depending upon the position of that particle, a portion of that one will be getting removed. So, that is what is going to discuss here. So, we have a homogeneous suspension with an initial concentration of C naught and what we do is we allow that suspension to settle and at different time intervals we take the concentration whatever is remaining in the solution, whatever is settled it is already removed from the system, whatever is remaining it will be there in the suspension. So, at T 1 the concentration of suspension is C 1, at T 2 the concentration is C 2 and at T 3 the remaining concentration is C 3. So, this is the remaining particles in the suspension. So, maximum fraction of particle with V 1 that is Z naught by T 1 equal to X is equal to C 1 by C naught that much particle is removed in the system. And the fraction of particle with V naught is nothing but Z naught by T naught that is having a fraction equal to X naught or we can represent like this. This is the settling velocity that is nothing but V t equal to Z naught by the time ok. At different time the settling whatever is coming it is having different settling velocity and here we are finding out the fraction of particles which is remaining in the system. Remaining in the system at time T 1 is nothing but C 1 by C naught at time T 2 it is nothing but C 2 by C naught and at T 3 it is C 3 by C naught. But at at time V t is equal to the design settling velocity what will happen ok we are giving enough time for the fraction of particles whatever is whatever is there that will be getting removed completely and this region the particle that is not in the top it is in the in between portion of the sedimentation tank. So, a fraction of that one will be getting removed. 
So, we can find out what is the total removal efficiency that is nothing but up to here x naught okay this is our de design settling velocity. So, x naught is the fraction of particles remaining at that time. So, the particle removed from the system is nothing but 1 minus x naught. So, 1 minus x naught particles are completely removed from the system and this portion up to x naught a portion of that one will be removing depending upon the position of the position where the particle was initially. So, we can find out the efficiency by summing of this one 1 minus x naught plus integral of 0 to x naught into v t by v naught into d x. V t is the settling velocity of that particle and v naught is the design settling velocity and d x this incremental length here. So, if you take the area of this portion this will be giving you what is the fraction of particles which is having a settling velocity lower than the settling velocity which is which was the design velocity will be removing. Okay. Now, coming to the discrete settling now another thing is there though we provide a tying depth of 2 meter or 3 meter actually speaking in discrete particle settling the depth of the tank is not at all important. Okay. How can we show that one? Okay. The velocity or the settling velocity at any time or any particle is nothing but tank depth divided by the detention time and detention time if you want to define okay, you have a sedimentation tank and you, you know what is the volume of the sedimentation tank and you have to treat a particular volume of water and the water will be flowing into the sedimentation tank at a constant rate. So, we assume that the in inflow rate is q that means this much of meter cube water per second or per day or per hour is coming into the tank. So, what is the detention time available in the tank? It is nothing but what is the volume of the tank divided by the flow rate because if the volume is 100 meter and we are pumping water at 10 10 meter cube per hour then what is the detention time it is nothing but 100 divided by 10 that means 10 hours. So, similarly here we can find out what is the detention time it is nothing but depth divided by tank volume by flow rate. So, again depth and tank volume is nothing but area into the depth the flow rate. So, we can find out like this depth and depth will be getting cancelled. So, you will be getting q by area. So, the settling velocity of the sedimentation tank is a function of the flow rate and area of surface area of the tank. This area is nothing but the surface area of tank not the depth. So, this is very very important in the design of a sedimentation tank especially when we deal with type 1 settling. Type 1 settling the design parameter is not the detention time it is this parameter q by a it is known as surface overflow rate. So, this is the design criteria for and the settling velocity of any particle is numerically equal to q by a or the surface overloading rate. So, this is the thing we were explaining earlier what is the fraction of particle remaining and at t naught x naught is remaining. So, the removal is 1 minus x naught. So, with this we have already discussed. So, whenever we go for discrete particle settling we can even increase the efficiency of the tank by reducing the depth. So, with using this concept only the high rate sedimentation tanks like tube settlers, plate settlers etcetera are being constructed because we are assuming that if you, you have a tank of 2 meter depth and if you provide many plates parallelly. So, what will happen? the surface area will be increasing depending upon the number of plates. So, you will be getting q by a is a very small number. So, naturally the tank efficiency will be increasing. So, nowadays many high rate sedimentation tanks which is used for the discrete particle settling have come up. So, we will be discussing about them towards the end of this lecture. So, we have discussed about type 1 settling discrete particle. So, how to conduct the column study and get the settling velocity and if you want to get the real efficiency of the system, okay, how can we find out what is the total efficiency of 
particle removal in type 1 settling. Now we will come to type 2 settling. Type 2 settling is dealing with dilute flocculent settling. In water treatment, this type of settling is coming in clarifloculators after coagulation. After the addition of coagulants, the colloidal particles are destabilizing and because of the flocculation or because of the velocity gradient we provide in flocculation, these particles come in contact with each other and they agglomerate and as a result what will happen? The particle size will be increasing with respect to time and they will be settling. So, naturally in type 2 settling, the depth of the tank is an important criteria because if you give more time, more and more particles will be agglomerating provided there is a velocity gradient available. So, we cannot predict what is the removal efficiency in the case of type 2 settling by theoretical means. Okay. We have to conduct laboratory experiments using the same type of suspension and find out what is the settling velocity and what is the removal efficiency. And if you want to find out that one again we have to go for column settling analysis. Here the column settling analysis is slightly different. The column itself we have to make some modifications. In the earlier case we had only one pot to collect the sample, but here what is happening is we have to collect the samples at different depths because what will happen with respect to depth okay the particle velocity will be increasing okay particle size will be increasing so we want to get a clear picture what what is the rate of particle or what is the amount of particle removed at different heights and at different times that is what is done being done in type 2 settling so here instead of finding out what is the amount of particle left over in the system what we do is we find out what is the amount of particle removed from the system at a given depth and at a given time. So, that is what this gives xij, xij is the fractional percent removed from the system that is nothing but 1 minus cij by c0 into 100. Cij is the concentration of particles left in the column at time at the pot i and the time j. Okay, so, it is a time dependent and position dependent value. So, we can find out xij at what is the fractional removal at, at different pots. So, what we have to do if you want to conduct the experiment, first you fill the column with the suspension whose particles we want to remove and we want to design a sedimentation tank. And what we have to do initially mix it homogeneously so that in all the parts of the column we will be having uniform concentration and find out what is the C naught. C naught is nothing but the initial concentration of the particles present in the system. Then what we have to do is, okay, these parts are located at 0.5 meter distance. So, starting from 0 to 3 you have 5 different parts and what you have to do is you have to take the samples at different time intervals say 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So, every 30 minutes you have to take the samples from all the 5 pods. Then you have to find out what is the Cij and corresponding Xij you can find out and you can tabulate the results like this depth and time. So, you will be getting different concentrations whatever is. So, that concentration that Cij whatever you are getting is the concentration whatever is remaining in the system. Then using this formula we can find out what is the fraction removed at a particular time. So, using that data we can draw this curve this is known as iso removal lines from the settling analysis. So, what we do is you have different depths so 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 3 like that and different times. So, you will be getting different percentages. So, you just write different percentages corresponding to the depth and what next step what you have to do is draw line passing through the same percentage removal. So, at different depths you will be getting same percentage say 15 percentage. So, you will be getting different values of 15 and join all those points similarly 30 percentage, 45 percentage, 
60 percentage, 70, 75 percentage like that. Okay, depending upon how accuracy you need, you can draw the iso concentration line for all 10 percentage removal efficiency, 20 percentage, 30 percentage, etc. So, once this iso removal lines are there, okay, how can we find out the settling tank efficiency? It is very easy to find out, okay. And the significance of this iso removal lines, okay. This iso removal lines gives the settling velocity of that fraction of particle. That means this is the fraction of particles or the type of particles which which gives 15 percentage removal, and this is the fraction of particles which gives 30 percentage removal, and this is 45 percentage, and this is 7, 60 percentage like that. So. At any point of this iso removal line, if you take the tangent, that will give the velocity of that particular fraction of suspension or that particular fraction of solids. So, you can see the top, if you take the tangent, the slope is low, as it comes down, okay, the slope is increasing and towards the bottom, the slope is very steep or the settling velocity is very steep. So, from this one, it is very clear that the depth of the tank is very very important in case of Floquelin suspension. Why the velocity is increasing with respect to depth? Because as I have already discussed, the particle will be growing in size with respect to time. So, initially the velocity is low and with respect to time the velocity is increasing and finally, you will be getting very high velocity and this is true for all these lines. See, as we go the velocity is increasing from the top to bottom. So, how to find out the efficiency? We will come to that one. So, already we have we will be having an idea. This is the maximum detention time we can give for the sedimentation time. So, we can mark that point here, okay, because here we have the time in minutes. So, say you are planning to give only 90 minutes in your sedimentation time, that means only 1.5 hours for the sedimentation. So, you mark this point here. So, what does it mean? So, this 45 percentage line is touching at that point. That means, if you give 90 minutes of time, you will be getting 45 percentage removal and some fraction of this 60, this 60 percentile, 75 percentage file etcetera will be also getting removed at that time. So, what you have to do is draw a perpendicular to that point which is the design time. Then we can find out the efficiency as R is equal to R naught, R naught is the fractional removal at that point plus sigma delta R into Z i by Z naught. That means, we know the removal efficiency is depending upon the velocity. As we have seen in discrete particle settling, okay, it is depending upon the velocity V p by V 0 or it is a ratio of d p by d 0. So, if you take this portion, okay, you take what is the delta R? Delta R is nothing but 75 minus 60 divided by 100, you will be getting 0.15. So, 0.15 and you have to take the depth up to the midpoint of this point, that is your ZI. So, it will be around 2.5 and your Z0 is 3. Similarly, this point you take, your R is 7, now this this portion R is 60 minus 45, 15 and this portion also R is 75 minus 60 that means 15 by 100.15 and you find out what is the Z i corresponding to this point from this graph and Z naught is 0. Like that you find out for all the lines. So, you will be having a line for 80 percentage, 90 percentage something like that. So, you find out all the fraction and sum it up. So, you will be getting the removal efficiency. So, these are the important things, iso concentration lines represent the maximum set, settling path for the indicated removal, slope gives the settling velocity. As the time increases, size increases, so settling velocity also increases and this is the most important thing how to find out the settling efficiency. So, we have to find out, okay. so initially we decided to go for 90s. 90 minutes and you are getting only 
60 percentage of removal and you are intended to get 80 percentage of the removal. How can you achieve that one? Only thing you have to change your detention time. So, say you go for 120 minutes or 2 hours then you see what is the removal efficiency you can get. So, like that you can find out what is the efficiency maximum efficiency you can get and based upon this data you can design your sedimentation time. And as I have already mentioned the salt settling and compression settling because it is not com coming in water treatment at all because water treatment we are dealing only with type 1 settling and type 2 settling. So, this salt settling and compression settling we will discuss in detail when we talk about waste water treatment. So, now we will see what are the different types of sedimentation tank which are commonly employed. So, we can go for either long rectangular tanks or circular tanks or solid cl contact clarifiers. The most commonly used sedimentation tanks are long rectangular ones and circular tanks are also being used. So, what are the important parts of a sedimentation tank? It will be having an inlet region and it will be having an outlet region and this is the settling zone and whatever is settled in the sedimentation tank we cannot allow it to accumulate there. We have to remove the solids from the sedimentation tank otherwise what will happen because whenever there is a flow there will be disturbance and whatever the settled sludge present in the sedimentation tank there is a chance of that sludge coming up. So, we have to remove the settled sludge periodically. So, usually this is the sludge removing mechanism and the remote sludge will be coming to a hopper and from here it will be pumped out. Okay. So, this is the common features of a sedimentation tank. We will see each part of the sedimentation tank in detail. Before that one we will see what are the common dimensions of a sedimentation tank. So, as I have explained we can go for long rectangular tanks, circular ones or solid conductors. The solid conductors are not commonly used in our country. But in hydraulic point of view long rectangular basins are always advisable because they are more stable and flow control, control is easier and we know how the velocity profile and all it is a constant because the particle will be moving with a resultant velocity of the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. So, we can find out and the length, length, length of the tank usually varies 2 to 3 times the width of the tank and usually the length is 10 to 20 times the height of the tank and always the bottom of the sedimentation tank will be sloped slightly because it will facilitate the removal of the sludge and as we discussed it will be equipped with a slow moving mechanical scraper to remove the sludge and usually redwood sl slides on a chain drive is used usually used for the removal of the sludge. So, what will happen a chain is there and this wooden planks are there and this one will be continuously moving. So, what will happen? Whatever the sludge is settled here, okay, it will be moved, scrapped by the scrapper and it will be moved and it will be coming here. And from here we can pump it out easily. So, this is the sludge hopper. And inlet zone is another important thing because when we allow the water to enter in the sedimentation tank, if lot of turbulence is there what will happen? The sedimentation tank will not be functioning properly. What about the sludge settled in the bottom of the sedimentation tank? Everything will be getting disturbed and it will be coming up. So, your sedimentation tank efficiency will be drastically decreasing. So, inlet zone we have to design properly. So, the major objective of the inlet zone is allow the water to enter uniformly without much disturbance into the sedimentation tank and out, outlet outlet zone also we have to be careful because if you take out the water at a high rate what will happen again it will be creating turbulence in the tank 
and the Cusson condition will not be maintaining maintain in the tank. So, that will be influencing or that will be deteriorating the efficiency of the tank. And the sludge, sludge zone which extended from the bottom of the tank to just above the scrapper mechanism and the last one is the settling zone. And we have seen that surface loading and detention periods for sedimentation tank design especially for discrete particle or type 1 settling we have to design the tank for surface loading not for the detention period because surface loading rate is nothing but it is the settling velocity because we have to give enough time for the particle to settle properly. So, the design parameter is surface loading or and usually for discrete particle settling the sedimentation tank we usually give a depth of 2.5 meter to 3 meter though we say that the depth of the tank is not so important ok we usually give a depth of 2.5 to 3 meter and if it is flocculent settling we give a depth of 3 to 4 meter because depth is also important and usually the width of the tank we give around 12 meter because if you reduce the width to to a too low value what will happen the sludge removal become a problem and length up to 48 meter usually we go and settling velocity for discrete particle the value the value ranges from 1 to 2.5 meter per hour and whereas the flocculent settling it is 0 0.6 to 1 meter per hour because discrete particle usually it is sand or silt or clay the specific gravity will be very high. So, naturally they will be having a high settling velocity whereas flocculent particle ok the density will be lower. So, the settling velocity will be less ok. So, remaining portion of the sedimentation process we will discuss in the next class. So, now we will see what all the things we have discussed in today's class. We were discussing about what are the different types of solids and we have seen that the solids can be divided into discrete and flocculent and this division is important when we design the sedimentation tank because the property of the solids are so different. So, unless we know the property of the solids the design will not be proper. Then we were discussing what are the different types of suspension and we there also we have seen that basically we can classify it into two categories either dilute suspension or concentrated suspension and based upon the particle nature and the suspension we can classify the settling into four categories that means type 1 settling, type 2 settling, zone settling and compression settling. As far as water treatment is concerned we are dealing only with type 1 settling and type 2 settling. Compression settling and zone settling mainly we use it in wastewater treatment. So, that portion we will be discussing in wastewater treatment. Then we have seen that in discrete particle we can find out the settling velocity using Stokes law. So, we will be getting the theoretical settling velocity, but in practical conditions or if you want to design a sedimentation tank for a particular type of solids we cannot directly use the Stokes law because the diameter of the particles will be varying and the shape of the particle will be varying because the Stokes law is developed for, for uniform size and uniform shape particles and we are assuming that it is spheres and all. So, we have to conduct laboratory studies the studies are known as column settling column analysis using the settling column we can find out what is the removal efficiency. So, if you design a sedimentation tank for a particular settling velocity all the particles with that settling velocity will be removing completely and some particles whose settling velocity is lower than the design settling velocity also will be removing because the particles will be homogeneously mixed in the tank from the top to the bottom. So, if the location of the particle is lower than the top level ok then the time required will be less to reach the sludge zone. So, once it reaches the sludge zone we assume that it is settled and now coming to the flocculent settling the depth of the tank is important and the column settling or settling column analysis is entirely different. So, here what we have to do we have to find out what is the amount of what is the concentration of particles 
being removed at each height at different time intervals and by analyzing the data we can draw iso concentration lines and using this one we can find out what is the efficiency of the system and we have seen that what are the different types of sedimentation tanks we usually employ the most preferred one is long rectangular tank because hydro hydraulically this is the most stable one and circular ones are also being used commonly and the most important parts of a sedimentation tank are inlet zone outlet zone settling zone and sludge zone and there the bottom of the tank will be always inclined inclined to remove the sludge and the sludge will be coming to a sludge hopper from there we can remove it easily so the details of the design and the values of surface overflow rate we are loading etc we will be discussing in the next class Thank you.